Hello everyone. Hola, hola. Buenas, buenas. Agustina Cusolito speaking. I'm here with Jorge Fortín. It is I, Jorge Fortín. <laughs> And this is Millennial Rhapsodies. Let me welcome you to Millennial Rhapsodies, a college podcast where we talk about a lot of things pop culture related. This week's episode is the Declassified English Survival Guide, where we will talk about everything you need to know if you want to survive in an environment surrounded by English speakers. Iconic. <laughs> Permítame darles la bienvenida a Millennial Rhapsodies, un podcast universitario en el que hablamos sobre muchas cosas relacionadas a la cultura pop. El episodio de esta semana es el manual de supervivencia del idioma inglés, donde hablaremos de todo lo que necesitas saber para relacionarte en un entorno rodeado de angloparlantes y no morir en el intento. However, this is not your average English podcast, since we are not going to focus so much on academic topics, but rather on the media and the internet. We'll be learning everything you weren't taught at school, that is, slang words and phrases, common abbreviations, and even some pick-up lines. But don't worry, we'll also go over asking for directions and stating your allergies. You know, important stuff. Very much so. Sin embargo, este no es cualquier podcast en inglés, puesto que no nos vamos a centrar tanto en temas académicos, sino más bien en los medios de comunicación e internet. Aprenderemos todo aquello que no te enseñaron en la escuela. Palabras y frases casuales del día a día, abreviaciones comunes como TBH, On My Way, e incluso algunas expresiones para conquistar a alguien. Pero no se preocupen, también vamos a hablar de cosas importantes como cómo pedir direcciones y expresar posibles alergias. Ok, so introductions have been made, but before we dive into the podcast, hi Jorge, how are you? Please introduce yourself to the people. I am doing splendidly. Thank you for having me. Uh, hello everyone. I am, like I said, Jorge Fortín. I am from the city of Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania, similar to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Very important. I am part of a grant, an international grant, and I came here from the U.S. Similarly, Argentinians go to the U.S. to do similar grants. I'm here to facilitate the English language, and then Argentinians go to the U.S. to facilitate the Spanish language, and it's an incredible opportunity. I was born in Honduras, and then when I was seven years old, I went to the north, <laughs> to the cold lands, to yeah. Philadelphia, and I've lived there ever since, and now here I am. I am living in gorgeous Posadas, and it's an incredible time. I love being here. That's great. That's awesome. You are our language assistant at Gummies. Yes, I am. I'm very local. <laughs> very much so. <laughs> awesome. So, with no further ado, then let's begin with greetings in English. Well, we all know hello and how are you, right? But English speakers won't always greet you in the same way. They also use many other English greetings and expressions to say different things. So you can also try to use these greetings to sound more natural and express yourself more clearly and precisely. So let's learn how to use some other simple formal and informal English greetings as well as fun expressions that people around the world use to greet each other. Por supuesto que la forma más común de saludar en inglés es con hello y how are you, hola y cómo estás, pero hay otras frases y saludos que se suelen utilizar y no está de más conocerlos. Vamos a repasar algunas expresiones formales e informales para que sepan cómo saludar en inglés. Vamos a comenzar con formas muy casuales para decir hola. ¿Qué tenemos, por ejemplo, Jorge? So we have hey. Hey. Hey, man. <laughs> Hi. How's it going? Sup? I think those are very common. Yeah, those are very common and just, you know, your casual ways of saying hello. Yeah, everything. I mean, you could say, you could say hello, but then you're pushing the boundaries of <laughs> business. Well, yeah, too formal, right? Yeah, it's too formal. 
para decir, por ejemplo, como acá, todo bien, ¿cómo estás? You can say, how's it going? Yeah, that's a good one. How's it going? Again. Yeah, and I think I use that one the most. Yeah. How's it going, you guys? Of course. <laughs> But, of course, uh, beware, because you shouldn't expect an actual answer. <laughs> and please don't give one if you're being asked this question, since people don't really mean it for you to actually share, you know, personal aspects of your life. So it's just another way of greeting someone without saying hi so please no oversharing in this household <laughs> no we're begging please don't and you know it's hilarious a lot of people get very angry about this well maybe not <laughs> angry but annoyed which i understand but have patience you guys i mean people in the u.s will be like how's it going and it's obligated by society that you have to say i'm good Yeah. Are you? Yeah. Of don't course. share. I don't want to know because if you start over sharing, you're weird. That's right. Yeah. I'm always fine. Yeah. You're yes. always perpetually good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Para nuestros hablantes en español, ambas expresiones se utilizan simplemente a modo de saludo. Como acá, ¿todo bien? Sí, siempre, siempre todo bien. No es necesario que realmente le expliques a la persona aspectos personales acerca de tu vida. Just. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. También tenemos ¿Qué onda? What's up? What's new here? I mean, we also have What's going on? I like that one. What's going on is really fun. <laughs> well, these are just some other informal ways of asking How are you? But, of course, uh, most people just answer with Nothing. Not much. So you would know whether it feels right or not to make small talk. Right. La mayoría simplemente responde diciendo nada, todo bien. And that's, I think that's preferable. It yeah. goes back to the oversharing. Yeah. We really don't want to know. <laughs> We really don't want to know. We're just being polite. Yeah, just that's your business. Yeah. It's not my business. <laughs> We can also say, hey, qué lindo, un gusto verte. I like that one. That was really nice. We can say, good to see you, or nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you, yeah, if, um, if you've missed a friend yeah. or a colleague. Nice to see you again. It's been a while. I mean, you could also take it for me, like, I haven't seen you in a thousand years. Well, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> kind of like the following one, porque también podemos iniciar un saludo diciendo, hey, tanto tiempo. Y para eso podemos utilizar entre las frases que dijo Jorge también. Yeah. I haven't seen you in so long, <laughs> which I think I apply that one to a lot of people. I haven't yeah. seen you in three months, and it's probably been a weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Long time no see. That's really good. Yeah. Basic, simple, applicable, universal. It's been a while. It's been a while. Let's get coffee. <laughs> of course, there are also some formal greetings in case you find yourself in any business situation, you know? Yeah, you're closing contracts. Yeah. You're in New York City. Of course. In Miami. And this is when you say these. Yeah, you're about to sign your music record. Yes. To start a shattering career. Exactly, at Universal. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's when you would say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Yeah. Yeah. And we mean, buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches. Here's, you know, something that some people uh, have trouble with, because you must try not to say good night, since this expression is mostly used to say goodbye. Yeah. Así que la idea no es decir good night cuando te encontrás con alguien a la tardecita noche, sino que la idea es que digas good evening. Yeah. Porque good night se usa más que nada para despedidas. It is, uh, yeah, you want to save that one for when you're ready to go. Yeah. You, you have your jacket on, your phone is in your pocket, you're waving goodbye. Have a good night, everyone. Good evening, I think that's, it's gentle. It's very, it's good. It's very multifaceted. Good night, it's for so long. Yeah. Deuces. Bye bye. Oh, that's another one. <laughs> Deuces. <laughs> Not for meetings, though. Not for meetings. Not for meetings. Just casual. Yeah, just Deuces. casual. Deuces. Bye bye. Yeah. XOXO. <laughs> Gossip girl. <laughs> If we've already met someone, we're meeting someone new, 
and we say, it's nice to meet you, right? Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. That's very British. I like Really? It. Yeah. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> right? Un gusto conocerte. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, ¿Qué onda? ¿Qué tal tu vida? Yeah, how you been? That's a, that's a really good one. Five stars. ¿Qué tal andas? ¿Cómo estás? How do you do? Awesome. I'm going to start applying that one. I, I really like that one. Yeah, it's how good. How do you do? It's great. <laughs> yeah, I had a great week at... Yeah. Um, well, there are slang greetings, you know, that are even more informal than we were saying earlier. They are used mostly by young people, perhaps, and not really used that much, as Jorge told me. You would just say, like, yo. Yeah, I'd be like, yo. This is rude, though. Save that for friends. Yeah. Save that for friends, because yo... We don't like that. <laughs> That's not good. That's not a wholesome way of greeting up another person. Yeah. Just yeah. Super casual. Yeah. You're meeting with a friend. Yeah. You're with the besties. Yeah. yeah. And you're at Wendy's. And you use, use yo. Yo. Don't use that for any other circumstance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We also have, you okay? You all right? All right, mate. <laughs> <laughs> That's Australian. We are Aussies here. Yeah, we are. We're universal. Yeah. yeah. We're worldwide. Like Pitbull. Of course. Howdy. Howdy. I love this one. Okay, Texas is here. Well, yeah. I've heard yeah. it a lot in, you know, um, not uh, really seriously. People just use it, you know. That's very yeehaw. Yeah. That's very yeehaw. Casually. Yeah. Just sarcastically. Right, yeah. We are in New Mexico. Yeah. And we're at the farm. Totally. And we're huddling the cows. And you might say a little howdy. Of course. How's it going? <laughs> How about sup? What's up? Sup is very common. That's very common. What's up? <laughs> I think that became a meme. Yeah. I really think that became a meme. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely did. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I, we have another one. Goodbye, Mike. <laughs> I'm saying it with an Australian accent. Yeah, of yeah. course. Goodbye, Mike. Right. Yeah, also really good. I think that's a good conversation starter. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, because then you're mysterious. Like, where are you from and why are you talking like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have... People will then ask you, what's that accent? <laughs> right, and then you just go, oh, I'm from New Jersey. <laughs> I'm just being funny. Yeah, I'm just quirky. <laughs> I'm being silly. Yeah. Eh, en caso de que quieras presentarte, in case you want to introduce yourself, you can say, my name is, me llamo, o mi nombre es. But you can also simply say, I am, or I'm, I'm Agustina. Yeah, I am Jorge. And that's it. Totes. Yeah. Now we begin the part of, you know, asking for directions in English. Very important. Very important. Approaching strangers to ask for directions could be intimidating. But don't worry, we'll give you some phrases to add to your travel vocabulary that'll get someone's attention. These polite expressions are a great way to start a conversation and get the help you need. These phrases are used frequently, so you'll hear them all the time before someone asks another person to do something. Cuando necesiten ayuda en cualquier ámbito y quieran pedírsela a alguien más, estas son algunas frases que pueden utilizar al acercarse a una persona para llamar su atención. Recuerden que decirle directamente una pregunta a alguien no suele ser la mejor opción, Así que estas frases nos ayudan a sonar más educados, ser más corteses. Para empezar, yeah. empezamos diciendo, disculpe, excuse me. Very good. And very powerful, really. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. It, it catches your eye. You yeah. will ca cut the person attention. Right. And then who's going to get angry at the person saying, excuse me? Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to say, sorry. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, disculpe, perdón que lo moleste. Sorry to bother you. That's another really good one. And then you have your question. Right. Podría preguntarle, may I ask 
Yeah, can I ask you? May I ask you? That's really good. Yeah. Podría, por favor? Could you please? Could you please? I have a fun, very, very petite anecdote about this. Uh, many years ago, yeah. many, many years ago, I was in, <laughs> I was in New York City. <laughs> speaking of Gossip Girl, and I remember I was by the Empire State Building. I'm not from New York. I am from Philadelphia. Yeah. So I don't know where things are. Of course. But you try to blend in, right? So you wouldn't seem like an outlier. This woman approached me and she said, very polite woman. I can only assume she was Western European by her accent. And she said, excuse me, do you know how to get to the Empire State Building? And I said, yes, ma'am. You just keep walking that way for two more blocks. It's a powerful moment. You, you were a tour guide. I was a tour guide. Awesome. For free. Of course. Yeah. And don't feel afraid to ask for directions. Yes. That's yeah. a thousand percent important. Yeah. You should not be afraid of, you know, people usually think, oh, but my accent is not good. People won't understand me. We'll understand. Yeah. And we want you to get where you need to go. Of course. Yeah. People are nice. Yeah. So just start with... Excuse me. Exactly. Sorry, may I ask? Yeah. Where can I find Little Havana? Yeah. And we'll tell you. Of course. We'll guide you. We yeah. we have a native here. Yeah. And we don't bite. I mean, don't assume that people will be rude to you. I think generally people will legitimately and genuinely want to assist you. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So, now that we have their attention, we can actually ask for the help you need, we need using some of these phrases. Bueno, ahora ya obtuvimos la atención de, de aquella persona que queremos que nos ayude. Y ahora, para pedirles ayuda sobre cómo llegar a un lugar, podemos usar algunas de estas frases. How to Times Square? Yeah. Guys, go for one picture and leave. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stay. That's not, that's, it's not a good place to be. Just go for one picture and go. Post it to your stories. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which way to the subway? That's excellent. Okay. Yeah. Entonces tenemos, ¿Cómo llego a? How do I get to? Mm -hmm. And the name of the place. Which way to? Yeah. ¿Hacia dónde o en qué dirección queda? Y ahí dicen el nombre del lugar. And lastly, we have, can you help me find? Excellent. Concise. Yeah. Eloquent. Yeah. Vulnerable. That's the thing. I think that this is the best way. You know, excuse me, can you help me find? I think this is the go-to. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is great. Easy, simple, yeah. and they will, they will know that you're a tourist. This is the one that I apply in Posadas all the time. Awesome. Yeah. Um, disculpe, ¿podría ayudarme a encontrar? <laughs> ¿Podría llegar, ayudarme, por favor, señor? Por favor. <laughs> por favor. So, we also said that we were going to teach you how to talk about allergies. Let's do it. And this came up because when I was thinking about which topics to explain in this podcast I asked people on my Instagram what they wanted to know and this girl Harumi bless her soul told me please mention how to explain food allergies I want to eat a hot dog without dying from a ketchup allergy Deadly. Deadly. Cuando estaba pensando sobre qué hablar en el podcast, subí una historia a Instagram preguntándole a mis amigos qué querían saber en inglés. Y una chica, Harumi, me preguntó por una forma fácil de aclarar alergias para poder clavarse un panchito sin morir por ser alérgica al ketchup. Así que vamos a repasar dos maneras facilitas de explicar tus alergias. Yeah. So, the first thing we need to know is cómo decir alergia. Alergia se dice allergy. Yes. Y para decir soy alérgico a, ¿qué I, frase? I am allergic to. Yeah. Insert noun. Yeah. yeah. Simple. I am allergic to peanuts. Yeah. Exactly. También podemos decir tengo alergia a. I have an allergy to. Yeah. I have a something allergy. Yeah. I have a peanut 
allergy. allergy. I have, yeah, I have a chocolate allergy. I have a chocolate allergy. I am allergic to chocolate. Yes, chocolate. That doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. I'm allergic to it. Yeah. Yeah. Sí, fíjense cómo en inglés el nombre de lo que nos da alergia se, se tiende a poner adelante de la palabra allergy. Si bien es correcto, no se suele decir I have an allergy to shellfish, but rather, o sea, lo más natural, I have a shellfish allergy. Five stars. Yeah. You can also say you are lactose intolerant, right? Or gluten intolerant. And the structure is I'm lactose intolerant, she's gluten intolerant, and that's it. You could also use the word celiac to say gluten intolerant, but it's not really used, right? That's too formal. Yeah. I mean, you could say it. And then someone will go, mm, what's that? <laughs> Then do you really want to explain? Yeah. While you're trying to eat? Yeah, no. No. Gluten. Yeah, gluten free. I'm gluten or I'm gluten intolerant. Yeah. yeah. Aquellos que quieren avisar también que son intolerantes a la lactosa, entonces deberían utilizar la palabra lactose intolerant, saying I'm lactose intolerant. Algo similar sucede con los celíacos, que dirían gluten intolerant. She is gluten intolerant. También existe la palabra celíac, pero no es muy común porque es más bien formal. Sin embargo, acá Jorge, Jorge nos dice que la gente nos va a entender, pero mejor si dicen gluten intolerant. Para que dar explicación, ¿Qué? tratando de pedir en Starbucks. Ya. Yeah. ¿Para qué? <risa> But maybe you want to ask for the ingredients in a certain dish to know whether you're allergic to them or not. Quizás lo que quieren hacer es preguntar específicamente cuáles son los ingredientes de cierto plato en el menú y para ello pueden utilizar la frase Excuse me, does the have... Yeah, so, excuse me, does the salad have... I don't know, eggs. Yeah. Excuse me. Does the cake have hazelnuts? Yeah. And I think that many restaurants in the U.S., I'm not sure about other countries, at least in the U.S., I've gone to many a restaurant. And after you make an order, I don't know, you get a salad or a little pizza or something. The waitress or waiter will ask you, does anyone here have allergies to anything? And that's the perfect moment to speak up and say, I can't have oranges. I can't have, I don't know, peaches. Yeah. Yeah. So you would say, I'm allergic to oranges. Exactly. I have an allergy to peaches. Exactly. And, and you, you, you heard this podcast and now you're prepared. Yeah. Los celíacos e intolerantes a la lactosa también pueden utilizar las expresiones gluten-free o lactose-free. Excuse me. Yeah, is this bread gluten-free? Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me? Is this pizza lactose-free? That's good. That's really good. So, um, maybe we have non-allergic people listening to this podcast. Or universal. Or universal, yeah. So they want to know how to ask for food just in general at a restaurant. Definitely. And there are many options. Yeah. Ahora sí, para pedir comida en un restaurante hay muchas opciones. Acá vamos a ver por ahí las dos más comunes. So this is the one that I use personally. Can I have a please? We also have, I'll have a dot, dot, dot. Please. Yeah. yeah. You want to be polite. I think that is something that we should definitely keep in mind when we're ordering at restaurants. I would say because being like, bring me the blank, rude. 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 Super rude. Really rude. You want to be as not formal, but you want to be gentle. You know. And nice. Yeah, genteel. There you go. You want to yeah. be genteel. <laughs> For example, I'll have the... I don't know. I'll have the lemonade. Could you also bring me the charcuterie board? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Huber. You ask. And that's it. But please, don't forget the please. Yes, please is essential. Please is essential. Yeah. Así que no se olviden de decir, por favor. Can I have a something, please? Yes. For example, I'll have a sandwich, but without eggs, please. I have an egg allergy. Or, can I have a pizza, but without cheese, please? I'm lactose intolerant. Perfect. Yeah. Kind. Informative. To the point. That's exactly what we need. So, now let's pretend that you are shopping and you see a dress that you love, but it isn't your size. So, you could come up to the salesperson and ask some of these questions. Imaginemos que saliste de compras y viste un vestido que te encanta, pero no es de tu talle. Mm. Podrías acercarte al encargado o encargada y hacerle alguna de estas preguntas. Do you have this in a smaller, bigger size? Yeah. Consider that smaller, más pequeño. Bigger, más grande. Does this come in a smaller, bigger size? Does this come in a medium, large, extra large? Yeah. You could also say, excuse me, is this the last size you have? Yeah. Yeah. Medium, large, extra large, sería lo que acá decimos M, L, XL. Yeah. Aclaración. The same goes if you want to ask for a different color. Algo similar es la estructura si uno lo que quiere hacer es pedir una prenda en otro color. Do you have this in pink? Does this come in green? Yeah. Yeah. Viene en rosado. Lo tienen en verde. It's great. Yeah. Here are also a few examples that will help you to ask for the price of something in English. Ahora, si lo que querés es consultar por el precio de algo, lo más fácil sería utilizar la frase... How much is this? That's the go-to. That's the go-to, easy, simple, to the point. Worldly. Worldly, yeah. yeah. How much is this? Yeah. Yeah. But there are also many others. Yeah. We have, how much are these? Plural, right? How much does this cost? What is the price of this? I like that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little dramatic. We also have, do you know how much it costs? Would you please tell me the price of this? Would you please check the price of this for me? Would you mind telling me the price of this? How much did it cost? Yeah. That's afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Pass. They scanned it. And then you go, how much was that? <laughs> no, I'm not taking it. Yeah. I'm leaving that. Take that out of my bag. We also promised to talk about some internet slang. Oh, you know? I'm so excited. This is what most people wanted me to address. So, internet slang is a non-standard or unofficial form of language used by people on the internet to communicate to one another. A pretty common example of internet slang is LOL. LOL, we say here. <laughs> LOL. <laughs> LOL. That means laugh out loud. But since internet slang is constantly changing, it's impossible to provide a fixed set of words that will remain relevant in time. So here are just some examples that Jorge and I thought of and that are mostly based in North American slang. Yeah. Muchos me pidieron que hable acerca del slang en inglés, es decir, la jerga que se utiliza en el día a día, ya sea oralmente o en internet. Por supuesto, hay una lista interminable de expresiones y abreviaciones, por eso Jorge y yo recuperamos una lista con algunos ejemplos. Let's begin. Let's begin. With one that made me struggle to understand what it meant initially, ratioed. Yeah. Yeah. Could you tell the people what ratio it is? It means, according to our friend, Urban Dictionary. Best friend. Being negatively called out on Twitter 
especially if someone thinks that what you say is dumb, by having a high ratio of comments to likes and retweets. Yeah, I think that's very eloquent. Yeah, you've been ratioed. You've been ratioed. So. Of course, it's not only used on Twitter. It was perhaps born on that social media, but now it's used pretty much yeah. everywhere. Bro, ratioed. Yeah. So, I don't know. Uh, a tweet could be at Candice was totally ratioed in her tweet last night. Yeah, mm, ratioed to the max. Yeah. Do yeah. we use it orally? I would. Yeah. Definitely use it everywhere. <laughs> use it at the library. That What? book was ratioed. Yeah. Yeah. We have the twin sister based. Yeah. It means a, a world used when you agree with something or when you want to recognize someone for being themselves. Exactly. That is courageous and unique or not caring what other people think. Sometimes it could be thought of as the opposite of cringe. Yeah. In Spanish, we say basado. Example, there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Bro, that's based. <laughs> that's so based. Of course. Yeah. And it's also a very fun expression. It is. Ratio and based are iconic. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. How about oomph? Oomph. Do you say it orally? I I use it ironically because it's hilarious. Being like oomph, <laughs> or we we could also say oomphy. Where's oomphy? Where's one of my followers? Yeah, it's hilarious. Well, we have the abbreviation O O M F, oomph or oomphy, yeah. as Jorge just said. It stands for one of my followers, or nowadays just one of my friends. Yeah. In general, we would. Here's an example. Oomph has to stop sharing pictures of her abs. Oomph is out of control. Yeah. Oomph needs to be stopped. Oomph needs to chill. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oomph. How about... Oh, IMO. That one always lost me. Yeah? And I would never take the time to simply Google what it meant. And so like then I was like, that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. In my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. IMO. This game sucks. <laughs> Boom. EMO, IMO. Yeah. And me opinion. Yeah, I don't like that. Yeah. 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 Send a DM. A DM is a direct message in any social media platform. And people may also say, slide into my DMs. Yeah. I think that could be suggestive. Yeah. So, yeah, suggestive. <laughs> most definitely. I mean, you could say it friendly, you know, like, yeah, send that to my DMs, but you don't mean that. That's not what you're trying to say here, <laughs> sir. Not at all. Slaps. We love. I, I, I can't even begin to explain how much I love that word. Just being like, bro, that slaps. <laughs> like that slaps so much. It means that something is really good or desirable. Man, you heard that new Mike Jones album? It slaps. I'm gonna localize that for yeah. our audience. Yeah. Have you heard the new Taylor Swift EP? It slaps. It definitely slaps. There you go. And, you know, we're still in August. So. We are. Oh, stop it. Taylor That's Swift almost, Mons. Oh my God. You know what? Segue. August lives rent free in my head. Definitely. What a smooth transition. There you so, go. with rent free, we mean to live in the head of someone that can't stop thinking about you or anything to do with you. Yeah. In this case, Taylor Swift, rent free. Vive de gratis en mi mente, Taylor. Yeah. Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Yeah. She'll always have a home here. <laughs> yeah. Oop. Oop. That's great. <laughs> Oop is a word like yut. Yeah. And it can be thrown around as a simple response or, you know, people ask me, how do I say arre? We use arre here, you know. Would that be the equivalent of oop? You know, I think so. Oh. Or like yeet. Right. Yeah. Like yeet. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, that actually clarifies a lot for me, truly, because I never fully understood what arre actually means. Because it doesn't really have a meaning. It's like arre. Right. Like ooh. Like kidding. Yeah. yeah. It's like oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Is it that? Yeah. That's great. So that you have hoop. Yeah. O O P, you guys. Yeah. Oop. Yeah. I forgot my sweater today. Oh, it's cold. And I oop. And I oop, you know? Awesome. Yeah. Per. And we use that to agree with something. Something that you like. Or when someone states fact. Also meaning, you know, period. But perhaps just. Short and cuter. I always assumed it meant like a cat purring, like a cat loves that. Yeah. So therefore, purr. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's like for example, he finally asked me out. Oh my god, girl, purr. Totally. <laughs> Fantastic. P u r r r. <laughs> yeah. Purr. 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 <laughs> In 4K. In 4K is to be caught doing something bad or embarrassing on video or in a screenshot. And there's no way to hide from it because it's 4K. The highest definition. Yeah. You don't want that. No. Don't get caught in 4K. <laughs> That's just wrong. Right. As an example, he was ha he was hitting my DMs, asking me out, but he has a girlfriend. Call him in 4K and send it to her. And that's what you should do in that situation. Yeah. yeah. Sorority. Exactly. Yeah. 4K. Yeah. Yeah. R.I.P. to him. R.I.P. Another segue. R.I.P. is derived from the acronym R.I.P., which means rest in peace. Often used, of course, on gravestones, but now it is used as a response that loosely means this or that sucks Or that's whack. Oh, that's whack. Seg oh my God, that's another great one. That's whack. <laughs> yeah. That's so whack. <laughs> Sucks. Yeah, here we have an example. Person one, I accidentally called my teacher mom today. I want to die. Person two, rip. Yeah. That's rip. so embarrassing. We use rip. Yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. I love that. That's yeah, really yeah. good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about... I'm screaming I saw a girl wearing Crocs under her prom dress. <laughs> Rip. Yeah. I would call security. <laughs> I'd be like, get her out right now. <laughs> CFW. Okay. That feeling when? That's another one that lost me. Really? Yeah, for so long. I never actually took the time and resources to figure out what it meant. Yeah, to, to do your research. Yeah. It means... It is used to describe a particularly emotionally charged experience, whether it is positive or negative. TFW, you hear Bay calling for you. Oh. Bay. TFW, you discover your roomie ate the last Pop Tart. That's evil. That's evil. In jail. Yeah. Yeah. Corny. That's corny. <laughs> That's corny. Yeah. Corny, it's like trying to be cool. But ultimately, very cool indeed. And often, even extremely embarrassing. Man, did you see that Manoa show? The way they posed? That was corny. Yeah. Yeah, that was whack. That was whack. Call back. Yeah. Hey, cringy. Yeah. So cringy. So cringy. TBT. It means originally throwback Thursday. But now it is often used on other days and can start just for throwback too, to indicate an old photo, thought, idea, etc. Did you ever use um, the hashtag TBT in the early days of Instagram? You know, I didn't post on Instagram on the early days of Instagram. Oh, yeah, I was just a, an spectator. Yeah, you were just watching. Yeah. Yeah, I think... I may have had some hashtag TBT posts. Yeah, but now they're live in my archives. <laughs> so they're never going to see that live. Why? I, I always just thought that TBT was reserved for your Greece trip. 
Yeah. Your four months in Malaysia. Of course. Yeah, or that one time you went to that really good bakery in Paraguay. Of course. Yeah, but my TBT was like, oh my god, I went to school because <laughs> you know I was a teenager. What was yeah. happening back back then? You know. Yeah. We we love teenage years. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty two. Twenty two. Streaming on Spotify. <laughs> And now we have ASAP. Yeah, as soon as possible. I think that was universal. That was universal and very used orally as well, not yeah. only on social media. Yeah, I think I texted someone this morning. Yeah, I'll be there. I texted you. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'll get there ASAP. ASAP. Exactly. As soon as possible. Yeah. ASAP. I'm dashing. Yeah. I'm running. ASAP. Yeah. Double O T D. O T D. How would you pronounce that one? Actually. You know. I don't know if it's used orally. Yeah. But it means outfit of the day. And it is usually used as a caption for pictures or outfits, you know? Yeah, like check out my OOTD. Yeah. Hashtag, I'm assuming OOTD. Yeah, right? Definitely. Is this TikTok related? Maybe? Um, yeah, you know, I think so. Maybe TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. This reminds me of this one TikToker that I always see in my reels, which is her being like, let's get ready or get dressed with me. Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag that's, OOTD. That's literally it. Yeah. Outfit. Fit check. Fit check. Fit check. That's another one. Fit yeah. check. Yeah. Let's check out this outfit. Yeah. And you can post that on your social medias and it's really cool. TBH is really cool. TBH, it means it is an internet slang that means to be honest. Yeah, TBH, I think he's the perfect boyfriend for you. I would even go as far as being like TBH and still be like, to be honest, like TBH, TBH, like Both. TBH, comma TBH. Yeah, <laughs> like you're, you mean business, like you're saying something provocative, but serious and truthful. Yeah, TBH, TBH. Siendo honestos. Very much so. Yeah, I use that all the time. TBH. That's a really good one. Uh, NGL. That's... That's new. Another twin sister. And lie. Yeah. It's, I, I, I see this a lot yeah. on social media. I think I say it verbally. Yeah. Can you imagine? Not gonna lie, TBH. <laughs> In the same sense. Both. Yeah. Uh, not gonna lie is used to indicate you are admitting something that may be considered, you know, strange. It could be the equivalent of just saying or no offense, yeah. you know? NGL. I'm being honest, yeah. actually honest. I don't want to be mean. TBH? I don't like your boyfriend. Yeah. And there you go. Not gonna lie. Yeah. He didn't sit well with me. Yeah, I didn't love that for you. Yeah. Yeah. TBH. I hate that for you. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Shaking my head. SMH. Yeah. That is used mostly on social media, right? You would not say SMH. I would say it in person. Yeah. If it if the situation really obliges me yeah, of course. to say shaking my head. <laughs> SMH significa sacudiendo mi cabeza, o sea, diciendo que no con la cabeza. And is typically used when something is obvious or simple or even disappointing. Yeah, you don't know what that meme is? I'm shaking my head. Yeah. Face palm. Face palm, oh my god. Yeah. Going back. Yeah, exactly. Throwback. Throwback. Hashtag TVT. <laughs> How about, oh, RN. Right now. Yeah, right now. Simple. In this moment. Ahora. Use it. Yeah. Uh, GRWM. And that goes hand in hand with double OTD. Get ready with me. Get ready with me. GRWM. Alistate conmigo. Yeah. And like we said, it's found in social media, mostly. I wonder if people say that in real life, you know. Mm, just that get ready with me. You yeah. wouldn't use the abbreviation. Right. And it is a video or a blog where you film what you are doing in your morning or night routine. Exactly. Why is she filming herself putting on perfume? Oh, she's doing a get ready with me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I-Y-K-Y-K. -Y -K. 
If you know, you know. Oh, that's El good. El que sabe sabe. Yeah. It is Eternal. used to cite drama or maybe inside jokes. Oh, last night's party was crazy. Hashtag, if, if you know, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is for locals only. Only. Exactly. And lastly, OMW. On my way. Exactly. And I added this because you texted me this today. Literally this morning, I yeah. was like, on my way. Yendo. El exactly. camino. Yeah. Use it. So, people also wanted me to say and to tell them and to explain how to ask someone on a date. Because contrary to what we see in movies, series or the media, pick-up lines are not actually a good idea when you want to ask somebody out. No. Please, no. Don't do that. <laughs> They are often considered to be cringy or corny, so if you are out and about and you want to let someone know they caught your eye, the expressions you want to use should be situational and dependent on the setting. Exactly. Yeah, there's no one way yeah. to talk to someone. But maybe we're at the bar. Yeah. What can we say? If we're at a bar, then you go up to the person and you go, oh, that drinks looks really good. What is it? And boom conversation starter exactly yeah if we're a party right you go like oh the music is great don't you think so boom you want conversation starters yeah yeah be organic be casual be cool in the moment tal cual yeah if you start thinking roses are red get out <laughs> i will call 911 on you <laughs> don't do that Don't trust movies. No, don't. Because we're we can't all be Ryan Reynolds. Oh, yeah, of course. Exactly. Así que nada. Si están en un bar, si están en una fiesta, en alguna jodita, la realidad es que la única manera de llamar la atención de alguien es siendo casual, siendo orgánicos. Así que la manera de pedirle a alguien para salir con vos tiene que tener mucho que ver con la situación. Yeah. Acá sugerimos que te acerques y le digas, eh, ¿qué pinta tiene tu trago que es? Amén. Claro. Ah, oh, qué buena música. Oh, ¿Qué te parece? ¿Te gusta? Sí. ¿Quieres bailar cumbia? <laughs> Here we go. Then, if you've talked, you've seen that there's some chemistry and you want to see them again. Here are some things that you could say to ask someone on a date. Would you like to go out sometime? I think that's great. Classic. Simple. Yeah, just go for it. ¿Te gustaría salir algún día? I'd love to see you again. Maybe. That's, that's, save that one for the right person. Okay. If you know what I mean. Okay. You want to see, don't, you don't use that one for everyone. No, not that casual. Yeah, that's not that casual. And also, it implies that you're really interested. Yeah. yeah, so use that one when it's time to use it. Break the glass wall and go for it with the little hammer. <laughs> yeah. Of course, you could also use the expression, would you like to go on a date? That's not very casual. It's forward, but maybe, you know, some adults use that. And I love that for them, you know? You can't be suave all the time. Maybe sometimes you just gotta go up to someone at a cafe and be like, hey, you're cute. What's up? Let's go out. And maybe it works out. Of course. Yeah. Be straightforward. Yeah. Go for what you want. Exactly. Live life. There are an endless amount of idioms, abbreviations, and slang words in English. And we've explained a handful of them today. And I really do hope that you found them useful. I would like to give a huge thanks to Jorge, who woke up super early today and went out of his way to help us all with this podcast, not only this episode. Thank you for having me. And of course, I have to thank you, my dear listener, for joining us today at Millennial Rhapsodies. If you enjoyed our show, make sure to come back next week so you don't miss the following episode. Come back. Until then, this is Austina Gusolito. You can follow me on Instagram at Agus underscore Cuso, both of them with double S. And you can find me, Jorge14, at saint.jeff27. And there you have it. We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.